Parker. Today is Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015. It is 3.01 p.m. and I'm speaking with Nancy Brown, who's the grand prize winner of the 2015 Close Alliance Contest, the theme of which was Animals We Love, and Nancy won for her quilt, Giraffe Nocturne. Um, so, Nancy, will you tell me a little bit about this quilt? The theme of the show was Animals We Love, and mm -hmm. my favorite animal is actually a penguin, but I had just finished a penguin quilt, so I thought, well, you know, I'll do um, a, some sort of animal that I have a good picture of, and I've I've always had a, a kinship with giraffes because we're both tall, even though um, <laughs> they're far more graceful than I am, so I, I have some good pictures from the Oakland Zoo, and I thought, well, I'd like to do a giraffe, and uh, I do, I've done giraffes before, and they've always been against a blue sky, but I know that giraffes, um, they don't sleep very much. In fact, they only sleep about two hours a night. And so I thought, well, you know, if they're going to be wide awake at night, why don't we put them against the night sky with a full moon? And, and so that would be something a little bit different. But so that's how it, that's how it came about. We, we saw that a lot of your quilts feature animals, and I was just wondering how you got started making animal quilts. If things might ever stop. Like, is that a topic you think you could exhaust? Or how long have you been making quilts that feature animals? I don't think that I could ever exhaust that because there's so many animals that I, I haven't done yet and I can and I I don't mind doing some over again too. Um I got started oh back back when I was in my early or late teens and early twenties, my mother took a quilting class and she came home and she she, you know, said, I'll I'll make you a quilt if you draw me some animals and I like to draw and I always liked animals. It's something that I think I was just born with. Um so I I drew her some animals. I had no idea what a quilt was or what to do. And I drew these little tiny animals. And she said, you know, I, I can't do that. That's too small. And I was a bit of a, a teenager, a bit stubborn. And I said, well, you show me how to quilt and I'll do it myself. And wow. Yeah, I know. And and so she showed me how to, to applique. She had just learned how to applique. Show me how to do it. And I looked at my drawings and I said, those are too small. I can't do those. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, um, so, but I decided to do one anyway, and and so that was actually that was my first quilt was a penguin quilt, but um, I did a couple quilts back then when I was like you know late teens, early twenties, and I really didn't get hooked on quilting until about in my thirties, I think. So, um, but I've always done mostly animals. I've done a few uh, people quilts, mostly based on old family photos. But I'll, I'll you know, I'm not going to give up doing animals. Yeah, is there an animal that you haven't yet put in a quilt that you would like to? Ooh, oh, you know, one of these days I want to do a snow leopard. They're oh, they're wow. just beautiful beautiful animals, and I I, I just them. haven't uh, haven't haven't got good pictures of them yet. I've, there's a couple of zoos that have them, um, but they're just they're gorgeous animals. And one of these days I have a, I have a list of things that I I haven't done. <laughs> I just got <laughs> someone just sent me um, an email with all these gorgeous bird pictures yesterday, and I only recognized about two of the birds, the real exotic ones from. Um, South America, I think, and that'd be a fun one too. So oh, you know, yeah, you could you could use so many colors and, and techniques uh -huh. for that. So, do you tend to work in series? So, doing certain a certain method or a certain style or certain types of animals, or do you finish one quilt and move on to something totally new? You mentioned you were doing penguins before you made giraffe nocturne. Yeah, I I, I you know, in theory, I like to work on more than one at a time. Just because uh, mm -hmm. sometimes when you finish something, it's really hard to to get you know to start a new one. Uh, but what happens is I if I have a couple going, I get really interested in one, and I just keep working on it till it's done, and and then I have to start something new. But um, I don't really have a you know a series. I just you know whatever animal I like to do next is is uh, kind of what I the way I work. Fantastic. And you mentioned that you you sort of started quilting after your mom took a quilting class. Did you uh -huh. do you have quilt makers in your family? Um, do you have a uh, well, quilt she, memory? We we do have um, my great uncle in Canada. Um, he was a farmer and he was, he had a farming accident um, where he couldn't use his legs anymore, and he had to make a living somehow. And he took up sewing. And he actually some of the things he sewed a lot of different things, but he also sewed quilts. And, you know, he had a, a hand, something, I think some, I don't know how he was able to use the machine, but he was able to use the machine and he made quilts. And we actually have one of his uh, quilts and it's a beautiful uh, um, machine applique uh, from the 30s, which you didn't see a lot of machine applique then, of mm -hmm. uh, red flowers 
and and then it's uh, machine quilted too. So that was you know unusual for for that time. But uh, that's how he made his living after his farm accident. And I have a couple great grandmothers that quilted, but none of them are people that um, you know were alive in my time. And my mother, in fact, mm -hmm. had she she learned by taking one of those classes where you know you learn something new every month because she didn't she didn't learn from the family either. But we do have uh, quilt makers in the family. Wow. Uh, male quilters in different families. So, how many how many hours a week do you quilt now? Uh, it depends on if there's a deadline, because <laughs> I, I really I do. You know, and that it it varies on what I have to do that week if I'm teaching classes or what I'm you know what I'm doing. And it really does. I am a creature of of deadlines. And in fact, the mm -hmm. uh, draft quilt was um, sent in the, the last day of the, the deadline, <laughs> and Just I think I entered it. Time. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I have been known to stay up till um, you know three in the morning to to get something finished um, when it's when it's due. But um, yeah, I can I can work for for hours and hours and hours when I need to, and then some. You know, it, it really just depends on week to week. It's not a. I don't have a specific time every day I need to to sew. Right. And do you have a do you have a studio in your house or where where do you quilt? I actually don't really have a studio. Um, I just what's really nice because I do hand applique. It's very portable and it's wherever I can get a good light. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, my my sewing machine is on the dining room table and my fabric is um, scattered everywhere. It's a lot of it's under my bed in boxes, <laughs> so I have to pull out my my boxes when I need fabric. So you know it's it's just. You find a place to sew, and uh, it works. I love that. There's, we have, I've talked to a lot of dining room table quilters. I've, yeah, I've, I might have some one. Yeah, there. You know, it. It if it works, it works. You don't really need yeah. a. You don't need a fancy studio. It'd be nice to have a big fancy studio. I've seen some really nice ones, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. we'll find. You can always so find room for building. Oh, it's it's very true. Um, you did mention that one of your that you do a lot of hand applique, and I just was wondering if that's your preferred technique, and if you have any other techniques that you use often, and also how you would describe your style. Uh, my style is a pictorial style, uh, and I do I do like hand applique. Um, I do like the I do like the process of doing handwork, and I um, I also do hand quilting, and um, it's just you know there are there's other ways to do things and. Um, I just, I've found how I like to do it over the years and it's, it's, uh, I have changed over the years that my style of hand app, I mean, you know, my technique of hand applique, mm -hmm. it is a needle turn technique, but there's things I've changed over the years. So, you know, I'm flexible. If, some, if things come along that, that work a little better, I'll, I'll try that. And, you know, it's, uh, but I do like, I do like hand work. Yeah. Well, I know that the, this grand prize is a handy quilter, sweet 16 long arm machine. So how do you, how do you think that might change your work? Well, I know that's that'll be interesting because um you know, I do hand quilt but I do um admire other I do admire a lot of the machine quilting that's going on and, and you know, um I have taken a couple machine machine classes, um and I've quilted baby quilts mainly with the machine. Um but this this uh this grand prize this will be fun. It's something that you know, something new for me to learn and um it'll it'll really be a motivation for me to get going and and, and work on those classes that I took, <laughs> and uh, I think it'll it'll be fun. Um, there have been times when I've made a quilt where I I look at it and I, there's certain areas that I think you know uh, it, there might be, it might be better if I machine quilt in this area if I if I was good at it uh, because machine quilting does give a different type of line when you quilt that, as opposed to hand quilting. And so I think um, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna try to learn and get good at it hopefully, and uh, maybe it'll start showing its way into some of my my uh my quilts hopefully so fantastic it'll be, i think it'll be fun it'll be, it'll it'll be an adventure yeah we'll look forward to seeing in a, in a year or two what 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 kind of work you're making and see what what's what sticks and what doesn't so that's really exciting yeah and you know um, i it's interesting because my i have a friend who has one of those machines and she just loves it and so she was telling other people about it recently <laughs> it's just interesting that she was talking about it recently and you know, it's, it's a perfect machine if you want to get a long arm, and so I think it'll it'll be fun. She'll be happy when she finds out I have one. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if there's any quilters or other artists 
even non-cultures whose work you particularly admire or find inspiring? Um, you know, when I, when I first started, um, there wasn't a lot of pictorial quilts going on at that time. And, and so probably the one that person that influenced me the most was um, a wildlife artist named Robert Bateman. He's a very well-known, um, very realistic uh, wildlife artist. And I think what influenced me about him is that um, he, he believed that, uh, that the background was as, as important as the animal, that, you know, your composition was important. You don't just do the animal and, you know, put nothing against it. So I've, I really uh, paid attention to that. And, and over mm -hmm. the years, I've, you know, I've admired a lot of the other, peop other people that do animal quilts, um, like Shirley Kelly does some wonderful racehorse quilts. Um, she's also done pandas and puffins, and she's just, she's a lot of fun too. She's a friend of mine, and um, I love Ruth McDowell's use of fabrics. She, she doesn't necessarily use things that look like fur and um, feathers for her. She'll put polka dots and plaids, and I've, I've really admired that, and I, I use that in my work too, that I, I don't, you know, I try to use some different fabrics um, I like Suzanne Marshall for her um, really exquisite workmanship, and it's another thing that I try to pay attention to is try to, you know, keep the workmanship, um, keep do good workmanship too. Um, she's done some great uh, Baltimore's with bugs in them, so I I, I like those. I also like um, Ellen Ann Eddy. She has her own style of thread painting, but she does some really interesting animals and frogs and all sorts of good stuff. That's fantastic. Um, I know that you you mentioned you have a friend with a with a machine, and I was wondering if you belong to any groups to quilt, or if you primarily quilt alone, or with friends, or what you know what what your quilting social situation is. Well, I do I do uh, belong to a guild, and I I go to those meetings. I don't uh, belong to a mini quilt uh, mini group because I um I teach a lot, and so I'm I'm with a lot of quilters a lot, and so when I do my own quilts, I pretty much do them on my own. But um, I do enjoy getting out with my my students, and uh, you know, and, and working with them, and so it's that's a lot of fun. But yeah, when I do my quilts, I I do it myself. Great. Um, so I just have a few more questions. They're they're a little a little more broad, but. Mm -hmm. One question is why why is quilt making important to you? Like what what do you feel as though it's it's added to your life? Well, I I really first of all I really enjoy doing it. It's just something that I just I love doing. So um, it's also the way I express myself creatively. It's my creative outlet, and it's it's also um, because I've I've done it so long. It's allowed me to teach, and I I get to get out there and go places and meet all sorts of fun and interesting people. So it's, you know, it's, it's added a lot to my life. That's great. And so what usually happens to the quilts you make? Do you, do you sell them? Do you give them away? Do you store them under your bed? Where, where do they um, end up? Well, they're not, fortunately they're not under the bed, but I, I, I do sell some, um, mm -hmm. some I've given away and, and some I still have. I, so it's a little bit of, a little bit of everything. 